Hello everyone, Liberal Gun Owner here. I've been working on a build uh, where I was taking some parts. I was trying to make something that would really be resistant to fouling, as resistant as possible. So I've got a mid-length chrome line barrel. Uh, got uh, the Cyril Forge Bear Creek Arsenal upper receiver with some dry film would have been there. You know, your typical stuff. Your Fell Zero bolt care stuff. All that stuff that's supposed to really help keep down, you know, keep that chamber as clean as possible and keep it working. Well, the one place that I cheaped out was on my handguard. I bought this little free float, Smith built manufacturing, and eh, decent little quality aluminum here. Uh, and the reason I bought this is because I'm uh, taking this to a tactical rifle course, so it's gonna get beat up. And I didn't want to get, you know, like a $250 rail system that I beat to <laughs> beat the living daylights out of and feel bad about, about it later. So uh, I bought this. Well, you know, the rail's decent quality. The barrel nut seemed decent quality. The problem is you have to use, this is really thin. A uh, regular wrench comes out to about this, I don't know, one and a quarter inch comes out to about here. So I have to use their proprietary barrel nut wrench. Problem is the barrel nut wrench is too soft of steel. It says this would bend at 50 foot pounds, which I find interesting because a barrel nut, you know, can go up to 80. Uh, with your threads on your up or anyway so you know it's just cheap little laser cut steel and the problem that I had you got to line these holes up so that when you slide this rail system up on here you line up with these two holes well this is almost there what happened I got it to 30 not a problem and you know you did the 30 and the release and 30 and release do that three times to stretch out your threads really well get everything where it'll made up good got up to 30 and this was too low so I went to 35, it was closer. Went to 40 and it was, you know, it's getting almost there. It's like I'm thinking 45 and I'll be there. And this goes up to 50, I'm good. At 41, this happened. See this, their little wrench? I don't know if you can tell it's V'd out. Look at this, this is set to one and a quarter inches. Line it up there, look how far that stretched out. So I get desperate, right? And I'm like, oh. So I put it in a vise, I clamp it back. I knew it wouldn't work. I mean, it's already shot. So I uh, put it in a vise, clamp it down. Matter of fact, you can see how soft the steel is. Look at, look what the vise did to this steel. Just ate it to pieces. And it, of course, just stretched back out. So then I get desperate and I'm like, man, okay. Obviously, I didn't skimp on the other items. I'm not going to skimp on the rail system. So I'm going to order a Bravo. I just need to get this off. Well, how do I get it off? All the wrenches that you buy there are one and a quarter inches or this wide. So, you know, I've got this that's shot. I mean, I could go to a machine shop, have a manufacturer something, maybe heat treat it. No, I get desperate. I walk into Harbor Freight and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, you're talking about this being soft steel and then you go to Harbor Freight. But I walk through and I find this little adjustable wrench that's got a one and a quarter inch setting on it and it's also got a very good taper there. Matter of fact, if you'll look at this compared to that, it's actually thinner at the end than the wrench that came with this, uh, or that I bought for this set. Now the thing with this wrench here is it, it went out. It started thin, but then it fattened out uh, to get to these edges here. Well, I just put it on a grinder and I ground it down. And I ground it to where it's pretty much the same width as this, but the cool thing is let me loosen it here and then tighten it. It actually fits on there. Listen at that. No wobble, no slop, no flop. This is on there pretty darn good. So I'm going to try this. This is a Pittsburgh Harbor Freight wrench. I'm going to go put this on the vise, and I'm betting that I can break this off it. 41 foot pounds. I'm betting I can get this before this wrench fails. And if this will do it and their wrench doesn't, then that says something about their thing. Now, to be fair, well, actually, I'll, I'll talk about the other side when we come back. Let me see if I can get this off using this wrench. If I can pull that off, then I'll talk about my conversations with them about the product. So cut to that and I'll be back. Okay, I'm back from the vise. Used my wrench, my manufactured Harbor Freight wrench. Da, 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 da. Check that out. Got it loose, never slipped a bit. Put it in the vise with my Nomar vise clamps. Put this on, tighten it down. 
took a little bit extra pressure. Uh, this is only an eight inch or six inch handle, whatever this is. It's, uh, I think it's an eight inch. And it took a little bit extra pressure, so I looked around and I grabbed, I saw a PVC pipe laying off to the side, because I couldn't find my breaker bar, uh, my breaker pipe, rather, that I use uh, sometimes. Uh, I put a little short PVC on it, gave me just a few extra inches of, uh, of grip, and I mean, it just broke right, right out. So, to recap, the Smithbilt proprietary wrench can be outdone by an $8 Harbor Freight Pittsburgh, not even the Pittsburgh Pro. If you know anything about Harbor Freight, they've got Pittsburgh and then they have Pittsburgh Pro, which is a lifetime warranty it's supposed to be, uh, you know, decent quality. It's still, still pretty low. But these just regular Pittsburgh things, I mean, these are like flea market quality tools. So ground down to be the width that I needed. This doesn't show any signs of, <laughs> of anywhere, anything. I did Smith built. So I just want to recount my conversations with them about this because what was said, uh, I contacted them, I told them of my dilemma uh, that, uh, you know, the wrench sucked, in my opinion, and that now I was stuck with a barrel nut on a gun. And they said that they had to manufacture these as cheap as possible, or at least uh, affordably, because they said no one would spend twelve ninety nine for, you know, pay more than what they charge, which twelve ninety nine for a wrench, for their proprietary one time, you know, most people use this one time and that's it. Okay, I get that. But this is, I mean, it's too soft to even use. You can't torque this down. So that leads me to ask the question of, are most of the people buying these just snugging them down to what they think is tight and not torquing them down to any sort of a spec, which I wouldn't do that. I would think it could be dangerous. Or B, I mean, obviously this is probably made in China. Uh, there's no manufacturing marks of USA anywhere on it. I assume there were others, $39. I bought this one because it was $71.99, and I felt a little better about thinking, well, this company, maybe it's uh, you know a little better quality, because you can get different quality even from China. Uh, I think this is probably as cheap as all the others, probably out of the same lots, uh, just different company, different price. But that's my opinion, uh, for, and all I can speak of is of my experience, but... I was curious as the emails that I exchanged with these guys, they did respond fast, uh, so they did respond quick. I, I respect that. But they said weird things like, have you tried placing your upper receiver in a vise? Because then you can get a better grip with the wrench, and it won't be as loose and might stand less of a chance of bending. Who would install an AR-15 upper receiver without having it in a vice block? Or, you know, some fixture of some kind. That's And I've never seen one that wasn't in a vice block. Uh, so I thought that was crazy. And then when they basically said, you know, well, we have to make it cheap so that people will buy it. Uh, you know, this is a critical thing, having this tightened down. Now, to be fair, the rail is, is a decent quality. Uh, you know, it looks good. And it's manufactured. It feels good. And, I mean, these are thin. That's why I bought this, too, is it was thin. Uh, you see where I scuffed it up in there. Uh, just grasping at straws, trying anything to get some leverage. Um, and the barrel nut seems to be well made. I mean, it's good and stout. Uh, you know, it did rub a little bit off, but I mean, I've still got some good sharp corners on it, even with this wrench rubbing on them. So the barrel nut and their rail system seem to be of okay quality. Uh, it's just the barrel nut wrench that I have a problem with. And to be also fair to them, after my second email, without any prodding on my part, uh, they said, do whatever you have to do to get this barrel nut off and send back the entire item and we will refund your money fully, including for the bent out barrel nut rent. So they're standing behind their product. I respect that. So just an FYI, uh, based on my experience, if you are going to buy, I'm not going to use this. I'm, I've got a Bravo one on order. I ordered it the day that I realized this wasn't going to work. That's what I should have done to begin with. Bravo KMR Alpha. Uh, that should be in tomorrow. And uh, But this particular setup, if you're going to use it, be really careful with the wrench. You might even want to you know, try to like, get this red hot and cool it fast. Get it red hot, cool it fast to try to temper it a little bit. Or <laughs> go to Harbor Freight and buy one of these and figure out a way to get a torque setting of some value using this and some contraption. Uh, or if you get it stuck on there, you can buy one of these and get it off. And just to recap finally, 
That is Harbor Freight Wide Mouth Adjustable Wrench, item number 67128. Oh, it does have a left. This is a Pittsburgh Pro. I lied. Look at that. Pittsburgh Pro. So this is their hardcore, which means it's $8. Uh, I don't want a lifetime warranty. Anyway, 67128. Harbor Freight, uh, Harbor Freight Adjustable Wide, wide Mouth. God, I can't even speak. Adjustable Wide Mouth Wrench. Uh, we'll get off this barrel nut if you need to. But thanks very much for watching. I'll show. I'll get a video as soon as I get the KMR on, and uh, show what the final build looks like. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great day.